In contrast to what we previously talked about, a lot of people who've been doing everything right, they've been keeping their lawn irrigated, they're going to be in overseed time. With that being said, I wanted to go ahead and talk about some things that you should consider before you do an aeration overseed, whether it's yourself or your customer looking to utilize a lawn care company. So for those of you who don't realize, mechanical aeration by itself is really gonna be just fine. You do it, it's done, you pay for it, you're gonna see some dividends, right? But if you wanna bring seed into the equation, you're talking about raising a living thing. You're talking about bringing something up, right? It's really more of a commitment and an investment it really is a much bigger investment and commitment than you think, right? It's not like you throw the seed down, you watch it grow, and you're done. It really does take commitment. And that's what I wanted to talk about real quick. Commitment is key with aeration overseeding, especially if you live in an area like we do here in Northwest Indiana, which, by the way, guys, we have been in a very, very bad drought, as we talked about previously. And because of that, growing grass seed is nearly impossible if you don't have supplemental irrigation mastered. We've talked a ton about irrigating your lawn, watering deep and infrequent with overseedings. On the contrary, keeping that ground nice and moist. It really, really is an investment. If you do not water the seed, cannot guarantee it's going to grow is because you want to do an aeration, you want to do an overseeding, you want to do top dressing, you want to do all these things. It's not going to matter if you don't water it. Now, I know the water bills are going to be crazy, but that's why I wanted to make this video because I wanted to challenge you. Is this really something you want to do? Because oftentimes in a lot of situations when you overseed your lawn, you really don't have to, right? Maybe you want to because you're looking at it it's stressed out from this drought and you're thinking, okay, you know what? I need to get some seed in here. My lawn is dead. Your lawn is not dead. It's dormant. And it's defense mechanism the lawn has when it doesn't have enough water or extreme heat conditions. It goes to sleep because if it stays awake, it's going to stress out and damage itself even more. So it's asleep. Not dead. It's asleep. And you'll notice that because the second you put water on it, whoo, over time, it's going to wake up. I can tell you right now, that's happened on a lot of my properties I've been to over the last couple of days where I've went to visit them. I've noticed my customers would be out hand watering, uh, maybe their plants or something. They get some water on the lawn, just this much, a little bit, a little bit. And those areas are green. Nothing to do with fertilization or anything. Maybe the irrigation coverage is bad, right? The point is, you get some water on it, it's going to wake up. So before you think, oh, I'm going to go ahead and seed, you might want to get some water on it. Water is king in lawn care. So that's one reason why a lot of people might overseed, right? So what I want you to realize is that if you're going to overseed, it might not be a good idea if you're not committed to watering your existing lawn. Just saying. Now, on the contrary, if you're able to water your existing lawn or you have an irrigation system, then it might be beneficial for you. But if your lawn is sufficiently thick already... Why would you put more cultivars in there when it's got plenty and you could focus more on defending the existing lawn that's there? Maybe with a fall pre-emergent barrier, right? That's a good idea. Get some prodiamine down right now. You could do that easily. Granular or liquid. Available on jakethelawnkid.net. That's an application you could get down. It's going to be beneficial. It's going to combat all of those winter annual weeds such as chickweed, henbit, poa, anua, right? It's going to give you a defense against that stuff. If you have a sufficiently thick lawn, that's what I would do. Now, if your lawn's thin and patchy and you're able to water it or you have an irrigation system, you're willing to spend the extra money, especially if you live in an area like I do where we have summer water rates, which, by the way, those have ended. And a lot of my customers, in retaliation of that, have actually shut off their irrigation systems. Now, do I know what those rates are exactly? No. But I can guarantee you, you know, in times like this where everything is through the roof, it can impact the pocketbook, so I understand that. So if you shut off the irrigation system and you're not going to pay the water bill, I wouldn't even bother. There's no reason. Work with what's there. See if you can thicken it up over time. And that will happen with grass in a, in a lot of cases. My back lawn, for instance, is bulletproof, guys. And this is what happens to a lot of lawns over time when you just take care of them. Now, it is good to seed and get some cultivars in there if you want a quick fix in about 30 or 60 days, right? But maybe... You don't have to do that. And I can tell you from experience, my back lawn, I've been watching it for years. Years I've been watching it as I've been doing things to it, right? I've had areas that 
have died from leaving things on it for too long. And within a couple years, they've come back just from good fertilization, weed control, mowing, and irrigation practices. So it goes back to another conversation we had. Get your cultural practices in line. You'd be surprised at what doing that alone can do for your lawn, again, if you're not willing to make that investment. Now, if you are willing to make that investment, that brings me to the most important part of this video, the investment itself, right? You need to water. If you do not water, we cannot guarantee that seed is going to grow, right? It's going to cost you a little bit, but if you want to do it, this is what it entails, whether you like it or not. Seed needs water to grow. Water is king in lawn care. That's just how it is. It's the cold hard truth. And it might be a good idea to get some water down on that dirt if you haven't watered it sufficiently a week before you do it. Because when you come out and you pull the cores mechanically, again, this is something I don't really advocate 100% of the time anymore. But if you need to get in there with some mechanical inter interference or you want to just for the heck of it, you want to pull some good cores, ideally two to three inches, four would be even better if you can get away with it, you need to water five to seven days before. Start that daily watering cycle we've talked about. The actual watering cycle, people are going to ask me, how should I water my lawn before, during, and after the overseeding process? I recommend taking all the rules we talked about, watering your lawn deep and infrequent, and temporarily throwing those out the window because the goal here is to keep the dirt wet at all times. I don't care about the existing lawn at this point. If you're committing to seeding, we don't care about the existing grass if it's thin and patchy. We care about the dirt. The dirt needs to be wet, especially if it's hydrophobic dirt. So what can we do to solve that? Well, a week before, at the very least a week before, we want to change our irrigation patterns, right? We want to water daily, not deep, daily. This is the only time I'm going to tell you that's okay. Any other time, I want you guys to check out this video right here, Deep and Infrequent Watering, right? You're going to water three times a day, at the very least. If you can do four, that would be better. Six, 12, and three, 15 to 20 minutes each time. If you're able to do four times, seven, 11, four, seven, that's the irrigation cycle you're going to want to do for your seed. It's going to keep the dirt wet at all times. Now, if you do that once a day, I'm sorry, it's not going to be enough. You got to do it three to four times a day, and you got to do that for the first 30 to 45 days. Before the seed goes down, during the seeding, after the seeding. 30 to 45 days after that seed goes down. Very important. If you don't do it, we can't guarantee the results. If you want to see what I'm talking about, because it really is a commitment, I recommend you check out this series right here where we've talked about overseeding the lawn and the watering commitment that guaranteed us those beautiful results. If you click this button here, something magical is going to happen. You're going to be hearing more truth from me on how to have the deepest, darkest, greenest, thickest lawn on the block.